Welcome back to International Relations 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is the McDonald's peace theory. And the big question that we have for this lecture is what the heck am I talking about? Well, there's a theory out there that says that two countries, each with McDonald's in them, tend not to fight wars against one another. Notice how this language parallels how we define democratic peace theory. Under the democratic peace theory, a single democracy doesn't do anything for you. Instead, it is pairs of democracies, or democratic dyads, that tend to be relatively peaceful. Here, in the McDonald's peace theory, we're not thinking about a single country having a McDonald's in it becoming more peaceful as a result. Instead, it is pairs of countries, each with McDonald's, that are tending not to fight wars with one another. This idea traces back to a 1996 New York Times article by Thomas Friedman. And if it's true, it would be a big deal. This is a map of countries that have McDonald's. As you can see, there are a whole lot of them, and McDonald's is continuously expanding. One would then imagine, if the McDonald's peace theory held weight, that pretty soon the entire world will just be overcome with peace. It turns out that this theory is pretty good. When the article was written in 1996, it was indeed a perfect theory. No two countries, each with a McDonald's in them, had fought a war against one another. However, it only took three years until the theory became, well, less than perfect. In 1999, India and Pakistan fought the Kargil War over the disputed Kashmir region that lies between those two countries. The Kargil War is notable as the key exception to the McDonald's peace theory, as well as the only war that has been fought between two nuclear-armed countries. But that's a topic for another day. You may be thinking to yourself that there are more exceptions out there, and you have some idea about what those are. But let's talk about why there aren't. Remember that we have a precise definition of war coming from the correlates of war. We have sustained combat between regular armed forces of two states, with at least 1,000 combat fatalities in total, and each side having at least 100 combat fatalities, or at least 1,000 armed forces. This is what defines a war. And the other types of conflicts that you may be thinking to yourself as exceptions to the McDonald's peace theory don't meet one of these criteria. One example is the United States' invasion of Panama. This does not qualify as a war simply because there weren't enough casualties. The same goes for NATO's intervention into Serbia. Not enough casualties, not hitting the threshold, and therefore not a war as we define it. As a third example, and this one not involving the United States, we have the Georgian-Russian War of 2008. This was fought over control of autonomous regions within Georgia, and despite the fact that the colloquial name for this is the Georgian-Russian War, it does not meet that threshold for casualties according to correlates of war, and thus we in international relations do not define this as a war. Casualties are not the only barrier here. The definition also requires that the conflict be occurring between the regular armed forces of two states. So if you think about something like the 2006 Lebanon War, this is not going to qualify because it was a conflict that was fought between Israel and Hezbollah, not Israel and Lebanon. And we have a similar story with irregular Russian forces in Ukraine during the Crimea crisis and everything that came out after that. So despite the fact that all of those countries, the United States, Panama, Serbia, NATO countries writ large, Georgia, Russia, Israel, Lebanon, and Ukraine, having McDonald's, we really only have that one exception between India and Pakistan. Despite how we have a clear exception, and things that look like exceptions but are missing out for various technicalities, the McDonald's peace theory has something to it. If we can count possible exceptions on our fingers, 
then something probably is going on here. Of course, there's something to be said about correlation versus causation. Clearly, Big Macs cannot be causing peace. But perhaps the presence of two McDonald's in two countries, and those countries not fighting a war against one another, is picking up on something deeper that might actually have a causal relationship. McDonald's tend to be in countries that are better developed, richer, and open to trade. McDonald's makes an active effort to only expand into countries that have money to spend and are integrated into the global supply chain. And so maybe it's not McDonald's being there and Big Macs being sold that is causing the peace, but perhaps it's this openness to trade that is leading to it. And that's what we're going to be exploring in the next lecture. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.